Fuck. Right, so uh, we have the uh, broken crankshaft. It is getting foggy in here, but it doesn't look like it is on the lens. Let's just wait and see what happens. So, um, what I wanted to do is, I wanted to, I did say in the last video, um, well, I'm going to say in the last video, <laughs> that uh, the EDR performance guy's got an awful lot of shit, or some shit, not an awful lot, but some shit on the internet. And it, progresses outwards there are other people who post on forums and stuff and they said oh yeah the EDI guys it's just fucking it's just them it's just wankers so uh, a lot of people have seen these videos you know they have like 10,000 likes smiley faces whatever's angry faces whatever and um, I thought I'd copy the internet experts opinion on what is wrong some of these are fucking gold Right, absolutely fucking gold. Now, am I gonna? Re yeah, fuck. Let's read out the names. Fuck up. It's public. So, some of these are just going. I wanna, oh, I'll explain them as I go. Right. So this one is from, and there's quite a lot of them. This one is from uh, Adam Serby. I think it's Serby. C E R B Y. I am sorry, but it it sure seems like you have an axe to grind. I'm yet to hear anyone that does track days or has raced with me that's had any issues with the cranks on the 2015 Plus. And I'm yet to see any more engine failures than any other manufacturers because, let's face it, every brand has a few. Granted, get that. Yet you guys post the same thing on almost weekly on a weekly basis. Ah, do you live in the Bermuda Triangle of crank, uh, of uh, fragile cranks, or there's significant user error in your customers, and lack of any mechanical sympathy, or this is just a beat up to get customers in for upgrades? Someone else says, Glenn Allerton says, uh, hate to say, it, mate, but I've seen two exact same crank uh, failures, mate. Now this is a problem. Adam gets 12 likes, Glenwood steps in and says, look, I've actually seen two failures that are nothing to do with EDR. He gets four. Oh, poor Glenn. You know, and this is how people formulate um, opinions and stuff and why the internet is a bad thing or the bad side of the internet, if you want to call it that. People hear something once, run away with it and go and tell their fucking mates. And if you hear something enough, this is what I'm, this is why I did this channel, one of the reasons is because young lads see this stuff and they go, well, who is it said it on this? And I heard it more than once. Well, yeah, that makes it true then, doesn't it, obviously. Glenn then says, yes, the reality is that the engines are making big power these days. And to be honest, I'm surprised that they don't fail more often than they do. Uh, power is just a number. And just like them um, ship engines that make like half a million horsepower or whatever, that's the whole point of engineering. We don't just... Dragsters, there you go. Dragsters, they take an engine and then just absolutely boost and fucking power the living shit out of it. And they break, and then they try and sort the problems out. But there's just some things that they just accept die. You know what I mean? Uh, ben Werb says, 2015... R1 running, 203 horsepower with no issues at all with the crank on lots of track days and 10,000 miles on motor. Just EDR that consistently find this problem. Ah. Gary L. Elkins says, Ben, be careful what you say. You might get an invite to come and say it face to face. I got one several years ago, LOL. Roy Martin says, Adam... It is actually a known fault, and a recall has been issued, so known by the riders, engineers, and Yamaha. No, the recall wasn't issued. That's half the fucking problem. Sam Vallas says, I haven't been inside the new R1 engine, but from the looks of the crankshaft, I like these, it seems like the outer gear is the cam drive sprocket question mark. 
looking at the end of the main uh, the failed journal there is evidence of benchmarks typically seen in rod bolt failures where bending forces were at work if that is indeed a cam, j cam drive sprocket, the harmonics could be really putting some nasty stress on the crank, especially in the amount of overhang, whatever that is, between bearings. Find a lab that does failure analysis and send them the crank and parts. Your oil supplier should be able to send these to their research labs for this service. If they can't find another supplier, when I worked at Amoco and Chevron, we would sometimes do this for our racing and industrial customers. The benchmarks, or uh, not benchmarks, beach marks. I keep on saying benchmarks. I don't know why it's bench in front of me. Maybe, maybe I should sit and do this on a beach. Um, uh, you can't tell just by looking at a couple of pictures or a video. Um, little cracks that are in lines can tell yeah it's it's more complicated than that he's only looking at a picture but his whole advice of sending it away to get analyzed and stuff is a good one someone says sam that would be one hell of a cam chain sprocket looks more like the cam drive gear to me uh, to the clutch to me dave says ray the outer gear looks like a cam drive to me to the inner looks like it's a clutch drive then sam says what i was thinking lots of force in those valve trains <laughs> not to snap a crank completely enough uh, with that much overhang who knows i don't know what he means by overhang it's between bearings the bearings sit here what fucking overhang don't know what the fuck you're talking about obviously greg uh Patenga, Patenga, cheap iron from somewhere. Check it out. Well, that means nothing, doesn't it? What do you mean cheap iron? Actually, these crankshafts are fucking really good. And check it out. Right. Uh, P. J. Riley says uh, have had eleven in three years, all the same. Yamaha says abuse. From street riding, canyon junkies to track guys. From bone stock to SS motors, exactly the same. EDR plus five cases. Now when someone comes in with one broke, I just send them to the dealer. Tired of the bitching and moaning on prices. Dave V Cycle Nut says, were these, stock, were, were these stock bikes or modified with raised red lines? PJ Riley says, Dave, all but five of mine 11 were bone stock, sands, pipes and bolt-ons. I basically believe it's because the cross drilling to the oil feed, the, and the old ones didn't have it. Had one three weeks ago at Neptune, Net dropped the crank and then he powered up a wheelie. Roy, oh, fucking why can people have normal names? Thersby, Thersby, yeah we'll just go with Thersby. That cause has the same fault factor all right i'll keep you never know it might be foreign uh when you find the problem you will find the answer <laughs> stating the obvious much it would be starting at the gearbox sprocket then work in so from this drive working in which way's in that way that way that way that way i don't understand what you mean but that crank is flexing on that journal all right, well done. Check for seizing bearings, chamfer round journal edges, flexing crankcase. Even check the heat treatment on both ends of the shaft. Definitely a manufacturer fault. Check the heat treatment. I love when people say that. You just check it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. Adam, oh fucking hell. Spitzelier. That's what I'm going to say. Big bang firing order with the cross plane cranks. And it's plane spelled wrong. And the fracture split titanium connecting rods must not work too good with junk crankshafts. Then the EDR guy says it's not the firing order. The previous gen, the 09 to 14, zero issues, even as it's not cross drilled to primary feed oil. 
Steve Neild says, Person personally, the design is flawed right there. Adding a bit more weight would be the most cost effective and tune the engine to suit. Of course, performance would be altered, but to finish a race, first you must finish. That's my short answer, by the way. Should have given us your long answer, because it still sounds like rubbish. What do you mean, just adding more weight? Tony Herrera says, uh, maybe harmonic issues. That's a maybe, you know, fair enough. Which is a lot of people's guesses. Are these all the M1 motors, or are any from standard versions? All same crankshafts. This is what EDR Performance says. Then he says, uh, another guy called Spencer Schmidt says, EDR Performance, can you offer any insight to the motor? With all stock rotating assemblies, tuned high, uh, rev higher, stock bike, um, built motor, 93 slash E85. If you are running E85 and your crankshaft explodes, stop making your crankshafts out of chocolate. That's not what he said, that's what I'm saying. Mike Cup. P pills, piz, piz, micro piz. Can they be overheat treating, perhaps? Well, then you'd see cracks and fractures. It is a question, though. I've seen some broken cranks over the years, but damn, not this consistently. Richard Ellison says, I think you'll find it is the metal itself. Looks like the company who Yamaha used has used low grade steel, more air in it than steel. Fucking knob. It looks like, right, because you've got one of those eyes. Victor Dandy says, shouldn't there be some damage and scratches on the crank if it has been spinning and snapped? There is. I call fake news on this. Well, you're a dick. Aaron Robertson says, Jesus Christ, what a shame. Class action suit 321. What year model did this start? They have been cross plane since 2009, right? That's just a question. It was the answers to that. EDR Performance says, 2009 to 2014, the cranks were oil-fed through the cases like 99% of sports bikes. Very strong design. 2015 plus, they started cross-drilling the crank uh, to primary feed oil to the bearings from inside the crank and created double drills in some areas, and that's the area always snapping, identical location. That is wrong. Because there is one, two, three. The cross drilling is different on this one. Um, we'll go through that in a different video. The cross drilling here, here, and the last one is the, uh, uh, there, there, and there. So one, three, and four is the same. And then someone says, uh, Rob uh, Rosenberg says, strictly a 2015 plus issue question mark. Next we have Brian Kessler who says, I'm doing my second 2015 R1 crankshaft replacement under warranty right now. Which is quite interesting. But both bikes stock other than that slip-on. One bike was at 4,000 miles, the other one was at 9. Both were number one rod bearing failure, so other end. I'm replacing everything but the head and cases. Yamaha ain't paying for it all. Josh Sutherland says, Wow, both before 10,000 miles, Jesus. Darren Stout says, crank, broke, or bearing failure. I don't know, do, what, do you not read? Brian says, bearing failure, haven't seen a broke crank yet. Any other shops having this issue? This is from Brad Morris. Uh, this guy, who I've, I've spoken to this guy personally. I can't say his name. Zachariah, Zechariah, whatever it says. Yes, in Japan, uh, we've seen it. And then a guy called Jim Hodson says it's common with the Big Bang R ones. I've seen this many times. Peter Weatherill says poor quality material because you're a, a metallurgist, obviously, with fucking what's it called? Mass spectrometer, mass spectral, <laughs> mass spectral analytical eyes. Stephen Catlin, oh, I'm just going to leave it as that. Why are you guys the only shop seeing these issues? Dennis Crutt says, I've seen this exact same problem twice with my own eyes. Other problems just don't, this is a good point. Other Others possibly just don't post it on the internet 
Or do you really think that the Yamaha dealership would show such a, an issue to the public? Very good point. You got 15 likes from that. I like that one. It's a very good point that just because you haven't seen them doesn't mean that they're not happening. This could happen to individuals who don't have don't post stuff on YouTube or you know maybe tell a couple of mates stuff like that. Uh, Zachariah says the same thing. Seen in Japan three engines in the span of a few months. They've done studies, you know. So he shows a picture showing uh, an Instagram picture. Ryan. Fucking camera. All right. <laughs> Batteries. Again. Zachariah comes back and he says, 12,000 kilometres, and then this happens, and he shows an Instagram picture. Ryan, someone says... Was red line increased on the bikes that cr snapped the cranks? Uh, Keith Wolf says research has found that they are only they are the only ones having the issue. No media coverage uh, coverage on right. Someone else, C J um, Cab Cabrera says I haven't seen anything like it. Four hundred miles. And Ryder must have been rev bombing this. You're just talking shite. Kay says, our tuner's raising the rev limit. That was an R6 issue. And just to follow up, I did mention this in the other video, but I have checked on several sources um, all over the, the interwebs. I've checked and seen what people say. I've looked at recalls and stuff like that. So this is from the Yamaha R1 uh, Yamaha R um, dot co dot UK. Someone says broke a new crank. Um, so this guy, what does it say his name? No, it doesn't say his name. Veteran. Oh, by veteran, that's his name. So two of our local racers have broken cranks on a 15 and a 16. EDR Performance has also had a spate of broken cranks. See their Facebook page and he puts the what is it. But this is another guy from another source. Any road, so I checked the recalls. This is through the .gov site. Uh, 2015 R1. It says recalls. Uh, gearbox may fail, which uh, they all got recalled for that. Risk of fire, didn't read that one. Possible loss of control. Didn't read that one either. These weren't crankshaft ones, I do know that. This is also from another site that says, uh, you know, Yamaha, to, oh, the same site, sorry, Yamaha 2016 from the .gov site, no recalls. 17, 18, 19, no recalls as well. So it's just the 50. There's another post here. I was the one that asked about this not long ago, and yes, EDR have posted a bit on Instagram about broken cranks in the 15s and 16s. The issue is the way the, crass, the crank is cross-drilled. See, this is the problem. Someone says, we think it's this. Now, all of a sudden, someone's saying, the issue is the way the crank is cross-drilled for oil purposes. Truthfully, the issue seems to be isolated to Pacific Northwest, unless someone on the East Coast would like to own up to seeing a broken crank. The issue has been heard of locally, Maryland and surrounding areas, all ending up with a common theme of these bikes that was crashed uh, that was crashed a good bit before said failures. So now he's fucking adding stuff in. Oh, well, they, they, crack, they dropped the bike a couple of times. It's just complete nonsense. Now, what I will say is nice, is because of what I do on this channel and stuff like that, is a lot of the guys in my comments to my video, uh, the original video, were a bit more... Possibly this, possibly that. I think it might be this. Is there any other reason? So on and so on. People are just basically changing their tune, and that's the way people should be. If you don't know, you can speculate, but you can only speculate. We've seen from some of them other comments, it's this, it's that, it's the other. And there's fucking probably thousands more of people giving it this. I ain't got forever to look through the fucking comments of videos and posts and stuff. But anyway, that's that. We can have a bit of a laugh at these people. Internet experts who don't put the work in and just start shouting, saying, oh, it's this, it's shit Chinese steel. They are made at Yamaha. Japan. 
these things are absolutely fucking beautiful. It's just a shame about the rest of it. <laughs> Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.